On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1972. We're going to be taking a look at ELO, and they're going to be performing Whisper in the Night. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So we'll get the guys up on screen. We've got Roy Wood here on lead vocal and guitar. I am going to be jumping in about halfway through. So as always, the link to the performance video is going to be in the description below. So you can click on that link if you want to watch it the whole way through without me interrupting it. But let's get into this. I'm just going to jump in here. What a blend of styles we've got going on here because we've got Roy with his writing ability, multi-instrumental ability. And when I say that, I feel like saying multi-multi instrumental ability because he plays so many instruments within this band ELO, but also with his solo stuff and literally getting into a studio and being able to supply a whole album just by himself and having that ability is something that is so unique to be able to have a voice like this as well because that's the first thing that strikes you in this performance the clarity of that vocal the way that his tone is so clear but also when he flips up into that head voice sound and it's difficult to distinguish whether that's his falsetto or head voice. It sounds like either head voice or a supported or maybe reinforced falsetto because that tone is so clear at the top of his range. And to give you an idea of the notes going on there, we're hitting C5s and an A4 and G4. So we're way up there in the male tenor range, but it seems like he just floats up to these notes and gets such a clean sound vocally. So we've got this unique blend of 
the rock and roll approach of guitar and bass and as you would have a normal band blended with the big band sound and classical music and the composition has that quality to it because of the strings that are in there if you do get a chance listen to the original recording of this song because it will give you such a deeper appreciation of this live performance because it is so close to that original record and by the way we do have Jeff Lynn in the background here playing bass and he and Roy were ELO from 1970 and it was 1972 that Roy left ELO but before that they were called The Move and it was their intention to change from The Move to ELO in 1970 but because of contracts and things that they'd agreed to it just so happens that they were The Move and ELO for about two years between 1970 and 1972 those two band names overlapped. Both Jeff and Roy possess this really wide skill set of being able to produce in the studio as well. And if you are going off to listen to the original of this song, you'll see that it is produced by Roy and Jeff. And I do have a video on Jeff here on the channel somewhere. You can check that out independently if you want to. But having this multi-instrumental ability, the vocal ability as well, where you can throw Jeff into that equation, definitely. It is such a luxury as a band when you've got guys like this that are part of the band and such great songwriters as well. And when I said about that multi-instrumental ability, it's something that Roy and Jeff really took to another level. But when speaking about Roy, he plays so many instruments. You've got clarinet, guitar, saxophone, bassoon, bagpipes. There are so many different instruments that he has got down in the studio, as well as providing some backing vocals. And that's for Jimi Hendrix on You Got Me Floating, on Axis Boulder's Love. In the background, that's Roy. So there is so much ability and just musicality about both Roy and Jeff. But here we get to see a little bit of guitar work from Roy as well, which we will have a look at at the end of this video. In terms of the setup here, we're getting a great sound. It's mixed really well. It sounds like Roy's voice has got a little bit of space to breathe. There's a bit of atmosphere on there, maybe a little bit of reverb on that mic, but it is so well done and such a great representation of that original record. We are gonna be jumping back into the video. At some points, I think think that the strings might be a little bit flat here or there. There might have just been a missed note by Jeff in the background if you're listening out really carefully and you've got a sub on the go and if you turn that up you'll get such a deeper appreciation of the bottom end and what Jeff's laying down on the bass. But let's jump back into it and watch it till the end. <laughs>
And there we have it. Just that voice, when it kicks in again, it just demands your attention because of the quality of it. Pitch perfect as well. And when I say that, I'm talking about not auto-tuned, but being so close to the notes, giving it so much expression with that vibrato that Roy has on his voice as well, which is always so controlled. And he applies it pretty much to every note to just bathe it in emotion and feeling. And the way that he's just flipping up into that falsetto sound, you can hear the volume does drop quite a lot when he does go up there. So it might lean towards more falsetto and less head voice that I mentioned earlier. I wasn't sure it's difficult really to place it because it could be a very softly sung head voice. But this is what happens when you're watching top vocalists. They have such tonal consistency throughout their registers that it is hard to see these flips into head voice and falsetto because you don't really notice them. So we're gonna jump into the guitar. It's not gonna be an instructional video, so we'll keep it quick. It is difficult to hear what is being played when the rest of the band come in, but we'll busk our way through it and see how we get on. So starting in C, we've got this little run. then getting into the C again and we're running down from that C and from your C chord just move your second finger over to the B that second fret on the A string A minor and now I've brought my third finger over from that A minor into an F F minor Like that and if you want to when you go to that minor I like to throw in just an extra little bit of a D there and that's optional but because the strings are playing different lines I'm playing the underlying chords here but you'll find that that D really does sit in there nicely by the time we get back to that C we have a little rundown again, same rundown to the A minor, same rundown to the F, and here Roy isn't playing the full bar chord, he's going over to the simplified version of the F which is going to be your third, second and first finger, leaving that major seventh up at the top, but he might be muting that with his first finger or letting it ring out, so we've got this kind of sound before moving into a D, into a G, and this is where we've got this run up again to the C. So just to quickly run through that again, we've got C, run down to A minor, F, simplified F if you want to play it like Roy, F major 7th if you're letting that high E string ring out. D, G, and just to show you those root notes or at least the run that's going up, we've got the G and then you're going to be playing that B with the second finger, open D string, first fret of the D string, like that. And my first, second and third finger are playing the G, the B and the high E string top end of that G chord and then you're back into the C. For the chorus we're doing a lot of the same thing so we're going C, run down, run down to the F and we're ending on a D which is going to be that kind of sound. And in order to play that, you just want to take your first finger, first fret of the G string, second finger, first fret of the high E string, and then if you let that B string ring out and the D string ring out, you'll get that sound. It might be the case that Roy's playing that D diminished shape rather than the F minor that I showed you guys earlier, and that'll sound like this. That 
mm-hmm. that D diminished shape. And I'm playing the open D string here. But if you want to, you can supply that root note of the F down at the bottom, which will now technically be more of an F diminished shape. And that's probably what you'd refer to it as because of the fact that we're pretty much going to be around the F minor chord. You can still play that. And then we're back into the C. There is a little run that Roy puts together when we get to the C. It's similar to the intro, but it just differs ever so slightly at the end. So we've got this. Just like that. So a nice little melodic line in order to set us up for that same rundown and progression that we've had previously. We have got a few extra chords in there because this is a progressive composition. So we've got F, E minor, F again, E minor, and an A, like that. We then have a little bit of an interlude, which is going to be our C minor into a G minor, I believe. C minor again, G minor. And then it sounds like we jump up to the G sharp minor, down to an F sharp minor, like that. It is difficult to make it out in this particular performance because like I said, the strings are quite dominant and they're ever so slightly out. So determining the chords underneath is difficult, but it's around that kind of ballpark. But when you look at it, I mean, you'd probably refer to this as a super band now because of Jeff and Roy being involved. And they were inducted in 2017 into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as ELO. And that was both Jeff and Roy are in there now, thankfully. And just to mention that Roy did leave in 1972. And in 1973, his album Boulders was one of those that he did by himself in the studio. He's also very well known in the UK for his song, I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day, because that is one of those Christmas songs that here gets played all the time around Christmas. And in the charts, it's one of those songs that always comes around every year. And once it was put up for download in 2007, it has charted every single year since then, and it's been in the top 40 since 2011, every single year. And I think before that, the song was maybe number 41 in the charts and then number 45 in the charts. So even though it doesn't go down in the statistics as being in the top 40 since 2007, it's been pretty close every single year when Christmas comes around, you'll find Roy with I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day in the charts. So it's just as regular as clockwork. Just testament to his songwriting ability and just across the board of having a very successful solo career, but also with Wizard. And that is the band's name if you want to check that particular song out. But thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!